Here we go back again with another video and today we've got lots to talk about. Lots to talk about Sunderland. We're here in this historic grounds of a building that was built in 1804. Big grand old building, isn't it? The big grand old building that. Pretty fantastic. So yeah, we have it at Usher College. Usher College. This part of the college has been abandoned for a lot of years now. It was an old junior primary school. Been locked up for a long time. When I used to run around here back in pre-COVID, that wasn't burned down, but some young'uns took some matches in and unfortunately burnt it down. Absolutely terrible. As you can see, the roof It might be repairing the roof. Might be repairing the roof. A lot of work will be done though, a lot of work. So we're talking about a lot of work being done. That's the same if some of them want to get promoted this season. We're bringing in a lot of youngsters, two 20 year olds. Now for me, that kind of sets the tone for the rest of the season. We're going to try and do what we've got with what we've got and try and get into the playoffs. But the players that are coming in, are they ready for the championship? Is this young lad, no, he, it, was, it was some kind of like, they expected a lot from this young lad from Spurs who went to Standard Liège. This mud, Muddell, or Muddle, whatever you call him. You know, expected a lot from him. And when he rejected the offer to stay at Spurs, he went to Standard Liège. Now, he's been on a four-year contract. He's only played there six times. And now he wants away from Standard Liège. So is he homesick? I wonder if he's homesick. But there's a lot of work going to be done this season still for Sunderland to try and get into the playoffs and bag one of those spots. I'm hoping between now and the rest of the transfer window, two days, we will bring some more players in like a mad. That would be, it would be completely mad not to bring a mad in. 14, I reckon someone said about 14. We've got to pay half of his, half of his wage, 14,000 pounds a week. We've got to pay. She must be on 28 grand a week, some wage. As you can see, we're in Usher Estate. What a fabulous place to come and visit. Only eight pounds entrance free. I'm in the chapel, it's gotta be quiet. But it normally costs eight pounds for entrance fee. But I'm getting here at quarter past three and it closes at four and the lovely man let us in free of charge to have a little wander about and look about. Look absolutely amazing. As I said, the building was built in 1804. I've got no idea what this part is and when this was. This is the chapel. Ah, right. And that's the part of the out there, the other part of the building which was burned down. It's derelict at the moment. Oh, let's head off down this long corridor. And, you know, it could be a long journey for these two new new lads coming in today. The lad from Leeds has just signed. Absolutely fantastic. We'll talk about him later on. The two new young lads joining Sunderland. Leo from Leeds, just signed today, and also Roman Mundell from Standard Liège. Two assets, but two lads for the future. Now, will they be able to step up and join and get straight into the first team squad? I'm not sure. We need some experience, because we're losing Pritchard. Apparently, Pritchard's going to Birmingham for £100,000. That is an absolute snip. And look at that. This is actually... Quite interesting to be fair, very interesting. There we have it, the classic and gothic 19th century debate. That's the buildings, the one that left, I think, the one further down to the left used to be a school that's now burned down. Unsavoury characters burned it down. I mean, imagine having a banquet on this table. Would be absolutely superb, wouldn't it? Absolutely superb. What a gorgeous room this is. Some team meetings and eat with the squad, wouldn't you? 
But yeah, Pritchard gone to Birmingham for an absolute snip. They've got a bargain. If he goes today, they've got a bargain at Birmingham. Fantastic midfield. They'll do a great job for Tony Mowbray. I remember years ago, pre-COVID, back in about 2017, coming here with my daughter, doing a bit of drama classes. That's what she was into. But this is absolutely a fantastic staging area. If you like acting, or all sorts, I mean, the seats, like a theatre place, isn't it? What a beautiful place this is. It's been years since I've been here. Years since I've been here. I remember doing a bit of acting on that stage back in about 2017. God, where's time gone? So come on, what's your thoughts on Alex Pritchard leaving Sunderland? I'm absolutely gutted. If he, if he stayed to the summer and didn't play much, we'd get nothing from him and we'd still be paying his wages. If he goes today before the transfer deadline day, we get 100,000 from him and we get him off the wage bill. That's why he was only offered a one-year contract and no pay rise, because they knew what they were doing. Speakman's not stupid, he knows what he's doing. He wanted him out the club and that was the way to do it. Offer him only a one-year contract, no pay rise, and he thought, well, I may as well go somewhere else. And he's getting a massive pay rise. Well, I say massive, I'm not sure yet, but I've heard he's getting a big pay rise at Birmingham. So I'm supposed to be out for a run, and that's where I'm going now. Not as fast as the hair, but we'll go. <laughs> it's okay. Have a nice day. See you later. Wonderful place, really enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Ta-da. Right, time to go. Two miles so far, I need to do a couple more. I've been interrupted by going in the college. Like I say, a big thank you to everybody in the college for giving me a free tour. Just went in at quarter past three and they said, it's pointless paying eight quid, mate. Have a look around if you want. I said, brilliant. Might bring the family back another time. <laughs> but uh, it was good. Good old memories, good old memories from the olden days pre-COVID. <laughs> a long, long time ago. <laughs> In a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> Fuck, that's a bit slippy. Well, I'm just beavering about down here. Mugging about, getting a bit of exercise in. Really enjoying my little visit here. So we do welcome Leo to the Stadium of Light. And I'll probably butcher his name. Lahaj? Lahaj? Lahaji? Four and a half year contract. What's your thoughts on that? Four and a half year contract? Good bit of... I mean, someone said one and a half million. Someone said undisclosed fee. Does anybody know that actual figure it costs to bring him in? Summertime. It's blooming beautiful down here. Lots of blossom, lots of flowers. Absolutely fantastic, spectacular this place to come and visit. Oh, look at that. Look at that beast. <laughs> it's a dragon. <laughs> I've known plenty of dragons in my time. <laughs> I mean, bringing all these youngsters in, you're taking a risk. Or is it, is it a cunning plan? Is it a cunning plan? Time will tell. Let's hope it all works out for Speakman and Kelly. Let's hope they can build something really good, restore this club to its former glory. Touch wood. Restore the club to its former glory. But the jury's out. But definitely the jury's out. And I think it's 50-50 at the moment. Fan base. Half of them want us to spend money and get some experience in and want Speakman and, and, and all these out. And the other half are like, yes, well, it's a plan. Take your time. It's the model. It'll work. It'll work. Give it time. Oh, for fuck's sake, man. I want to be in the Premier League, but at the same time, I get both sides of the story. I do. I get it. I wanted to work, but at the same time, I don't really trust them. I don't trust them. And the minutes were released last Thursday, and I've been reading the minutes to do with the Red and White Army asking the questions at KLD, Steve Davis, and Christian Speakman, and all them were at this minutes meeting. And they discussed the Newcastle situation with the tickets. The Black Cats bar. The ticket office. And there's going to be massive plans to bring everything back to normal. Well, 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 well. At this moment in time, we'll probably run the worst 
in the Premier League, worse than the Championship, worse than the League One, to be fair. And I'll give you some reasons why. So the Derby, that was just a, for me, a cash cow. A way for making money. Newcastle came in and said they want 15%. We should have said no. You kick your 3,000, you go up a height, season card holder, stay in the same place. Then, they ask questions just like, why the Black Cats bar? Why did we give them the Black Cats bar? Give them the North Stand, we should not have given them the Black Cats bar. That's my personal opinion. There's no way in a million years we should have given Newcastle the Black Cats bar. Let alone, let them put their own shite up in the Black Cats bar. It's £100 a ticket. That's how much we charge Newcastle. Who pays £600? Absolutely bizarre. So that gives them the right to do whatever they want. Absolutely bollocks. KLD, they did say they didn't understand the historic... They didn't understand the derby at all, did they? I kind of get that in my head. How does someone like Chris Waters, Steve Davis, and all these people not understand the derby? That's absolutely bizarre. Absolutely bizarre. For me, that's absolute bollocks. It was just a way to make money, cash. It's a lot of money. A lot of money. Sell your soul to the devil. But yeah, KLD has come and apologised. Basically learnt the lessons. And there's an internal investigation going on. An internal investigation going on. And the results, we probably will not know the results of that internal investigation. I don't think we'll find out who gets disciplined, if anybody at all? Ah, I hate seeing buildings like that. What a travesty. Absolute travesty. Let's hope one day that can be restored to its former glory. <sighs> so yeah, customer services. How bad is Sunderland's customer service? In the meeting, in the minutes, a lady said she rang every single championship and League One team is customer service. And every single one, every single club she got through and passed on to the right department. The only club that didn't answer the phone was Sunderland. That is pathetic. It really is, isn't it? That's got to be the worst. That's how, where, what has happened to this club? to be the worst at customer service. Then a guy said he, he also rang, I think every Premier League club. And he got through as well. He got through, so everybody, wait, everybody, two of them got through to every single club and were passed through, passed on to the correct department, apart from Sunderland, never answered on both occasions. That is absolutely shocking. Shocking from this club. That has got to change. KLD said that things are going to change. There's a new guy in charge of the ticket office and he will implement touch wood a better service to us, the paying fans. The fans that count at this club. The fans. I remember coming to this place years ago and I didn't even know it was closed down until somebody said the other day. So I thought I'd pop along and have a quick look. Well, we can have a look together, can't we? The old DLI building, Durham Light Infantry building, I think has moved to the old Mount Oswald Golf Course, if I'm correct. And that's just been reopened just recently. The old Mount Oswald Golf Course has just, you know, the, the old clubhouse that is now apparently, let me know in the comments down below, the new DLI building. There we have it, the old DLI building. All closed down since 2016. Yep, all closed down now, the new, look at that. Big old building gun. Can't see inside really. I went there once, probably about 2014, 2015. The Durham Light Infantry, and it's now gone. Apparently it's at Mount Oswald Golf Course. So there we have it, the old DLI has closed down. You know, I came here years ago. I didn't even realise. As you can see, completely gone. This is the staff entrance. 
where they used to bring all the um, deliveries and everything up here and it's abandoned. I wonder if it's gonna get knocked down at some point. It's quite sad to be honest, isn't it? Seeing the building like that. And the grounds got no waste. Don't know what they end up being here. Will it end up being more houses? As you can see, it's just wet and dismal. But out of all of the minutes and points in the meeting with the Red and White Army and the senior supporters, Black Cat's liaisons, KLD and his cronies, which points are the most interesting to you? I've named a couple there. Have you read them? I've read them myself. There's lots of... They want to make it a fan-centric. That was he said. KLD says he wants to make Sunderland the biggest fan-centric club in England. <laughs> He's got a long way to go for that, mind. But fan-centric. The best and biggest fan-centric club in England. Well, they're bold. That's a bold statement. A bold statement. There's so many things that could be improved. Ticketing. Being able to pick the phone up, ring, and also not have to go all the way. Somebody drove from West Yorkshire to get one of those plastic cards. It's a long way to come for a car, but all you have to do is just ring, someone answers the phone, and you're laughing. But yeah, we were a long, long way away off being fan centric. Being, you know, even a people club. This sad. we should have we should have four or five people who were able to answer phones every single day, Monday to Friday, at the ticket office. So when people need help, someone's on the other end of the line to help them. The fans are the the fans of the club. Simple as. Me, you, everybody out there, all Sunderland fans, we're the club. There's many of those being a Sunderland fan. <laughs> Well, here we are, Beacon Hill. Oh, Beacon Hill. And another place I've never been before in Durham. Oh, it's, it's mad, isn't it? Places you haven't been to. There's the cathedral itself. Welcome to Beacon Hill, part of the Jubilee War created by, created to mark the silver and platinum jubilees for Queen Elizabeth II. There we have it. Oh. Nice, that. Nice. In 2022, the Freeman commissioned a local blacksmith, Brian Russell, to forge a beacon for the city mark of the platinum jubilee for Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. God rest her soul. That's so we have it there, the beacon. I didn't even know it existed. Where to park my car? All oh, right, over there, <laughs> City Hall. <laughs> I didn't even know that existed. Hey, you learn something every day. Like I said before, every day is a school day. <laughs> Just getting back. I'm absolutely freezing. It's balding out there now. Hope you've enjoyed the video so far. And if you enjoyed the content, please subscribe to the channel if you're new. Give us a thumbs up if you're enjoying the content. So yes, Leo Hielde. That, I think is how you pronounce it. Hielde, hopefully. Now, just joined today, a four and a half year contract. Wish him well at Sunderland. Left-sided player, we talked about it already. But Leo has said in his first interview, it feels great to be here and I'm grateful for the opportunity. I spoke to my dad, who was a footballer, who showed me the size of the club and the support and I knew it was the move I simply couldn't turn down. I'm a ball playing centre back or left back, and I like to get up and down the pitch. I've been at some big clubs previously, and this has helped me to develop as a player and a person, and I'm now ready to push on and take the next step. Well, we wish you well. Sporting director Christian Speakman says, We're really pleased to have acquired Leo on a permanent basis as he's a player we've admired for some time. He possesses the ability to play three different positions in our back line, which they will absolutely love. 
depending on the formation. And he joins us having already experienced the EFL Championship once. Maybe once or twice. We hope this will allow him to hit the ground running and help our team throughout the next 16 games. Whilst also bringing strength to our squad long term. So it looks as if they want him. He's fit. He's fit. They want him to get straight into it. So I wonder if he starts. Surely against Middlesbrough. It's far too soon to start him against Middlesbrough. Where does that leave Silt? Does that mean Silt will be dropped and he put you back to right back if you bring in the elder on the left side? It, there's, there's many things, many things. So there we go. Now the other young lad, <coughs> Romain Mundell, he apparently is a very strong, very strong, very fast. He can use both feet, very skillful, and he's like a Jack Clark replacement. Hopefully not until the summer. And if we get promoted, <laughs> if we get promoted, hopefully we'll keep both. But you know, it is what it is. But anyway, the young lad hopefully will sign him tomorrow. It will, will be it will be advertised tomorrow again with the shirt outside the Academy of Light. So there we go, two players. But we do need more. And Mad again is in social media. And Mad saying that he wants to come to Sunderland. Will this deal happen? It would be superb if it does, especially now we know Pritchard is on his way out. Almost at Birmingham. So, what's your thoughts on today's proceedings? Is it it's starting to heat up nicely towards the last two days of the transfer window? But we do need that experienced striker. But I can't see an experienced striker coming in now. I cannot. I'd be absolutely surprised if we get another striker in when there's already four at the club. Unless, of course, one goes out on loan. Let me know again your thoughts on the minutes for the meeting. Which were the interesting parts for you? As I said, I've, I've really just scratched the surface there because it happened last Thursday. So there we go. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Take care. God bless me. God go with you. I'm going to go make a curry because I'm freezing cold. I need to be warmed up. A bit of spicy one anyway. Thank you. And we'll see you later. And you know that building that we saw as well, the building that we saw just there now, it was all derelict and dropping to bits. <sighs> you know, according to the meetings, we the worst club for... Worst club you know, we, we, to get in contact with. We need building. We need restoring to our former glory. Some of the stadium and lights needs restoring to its former glory. A lot of money needs to be spent. Leaky ceilings, hand dryers turned off, generator not work, and there's lots of things wrong with the stadium of light. It's looking a bit grubby, a bit mouldy in places. You know, it's it's... Getting on to 20 years plus easy now. So we need to spend money on that as well. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like I said, let's restore Sunland back to its former glory. Take care. God bless. And we'll see you later. Thank you.